All right, Luke Thomas here from MMA Fighting, joined on the line by a man who makes his mixed martial arts pro debut. He is a former U.S. Olympian, a multiple-time national champion, Division One wrestler, uh, and a highly regarded prospect in the world of mixed martial arts. Steve Mako is here. Steve, how are you, buddy? How's it going? Good. All right, so Steve, there was a narrative about how you got into MMA, and one of the ones presented was that you had been recruited to help Antonio Bigfoot Silva prior to UFC 146 because he was going to fight Cain Velasquez. But I, I recently sort of saw that you had, before that, been training with Carmelo Marrero. You know, talk to me. How did you actually end up in the position you're in today? Yeah, I, uh, I was coaching at Lehigh, and uh, I always had an interest in MMA. Uh, Carmelo opened up a gym in uh, Lehigh Valley, an American top team, and... Uh, I met I met uh, Coach Laborio there, and I also knew Cammy. He worked as a wrestling coach down in uh, Florida, and I came down uh, to Florida after the uh, trials this year to uh, you know train with Bigfoot and and kind of check it out. And I, I liked it down there; it was a good fit. Everybody kind of like seemed real real good good situation for me, so I so I moved down. When did you first hook up with Marrero? I was looking for training partners to get ready for uh, freestyle wrestling, and he, he he had a wrestling background. Uh, he came up to start training, like to, to cross train with me, you know, and, and wrestle. And uh, you know, then I started kind of like going down when he opened up the gym and 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 working out at his gym. It was probably about you know a year ago or so. It was when I was coaching at uh, Lehigh. Yeah. When you when you first started sort of cross training outside of freestyle into MMA, what were your first impressions of it? I liked it. You know, it's exciting for me. I mean, it's, it's new, and uh, I'm trying to learn as much as I can. Uh, and, it, and it's a it's a fresh thing. You know, I've wrestled pretty much my whole life, so the it's new it's a new exciting uh, challenge for me. You know. Were there, I mean, you were a guy who was primarily focused on freestyle uh, at the time when MMA sort of hit a boom. Were you not paying attention to it at all? Were you vaguely aware of it? How much did you know before you actually were hands-on with it? I mean, I, I always had an interest in it. I follow it. I mean, I, I, I was I'm, I was into it even when I was competing in freestyle, you know, but I just had a lot of goals in my, my, my mind, and, and I was pretty, as far as actually jumping into it, I was pretty, you know, set on what I was doing, so I didn't really have time to, to get into it, you know? Hmm. Did any other elite-level wrestlers, and I mean sort of elite by, let's say, national team or maybe, I don't know, uh, who did very well in college, did any of them ever try to recruit you or put in a good word for it? Yeah, yeah. No, I, talk, I, talk, I talk to a lot of guys, you know, over, over years, guys that have gotten into it, you know? But, I mean, at the time, I was pretty much, you know, set on wrestling and, and uh, wrestling full-time as a living. So, so that was kind of what was, what, was, what was up, you know. So you were coaching at Lehigh. I, certainly, I'm sure that was a wonderful position. But why was it enticing for you to leave coaching and move into this? Was it the idea that you could still compete as an athlete? Like, was that something that you, you felt like you hadn't finished doing? Yeah. No, I definitely wanted to still compete. Uh <laughs> I mean, I liked coaching. It, it was it was great, but I, I still had you know the itch to compete, and and and, tra- and training and it was new. I, I liked it. I liked uh, the sport, and uh, that's kind of that's kind of how how it went about. I mean, like I still wanted to compete. I was pretty much done wrestling com- competitively. You know, I wasn't going to do another cycle. So I figured if I'm thirty, if now's the time if I'm going to do it to do it. You know. What is your opinion about uh, the state of wrestling in, in mixed martial arts? So wrestling for those purposes, uh, what, what is your opinion about it? Is it good? Is it bad? Is it improving? Do you mean I'm not I'm not following? Like you mean like wrestling in MMA, or yeah. you mean like the the average how- high level fighter? How would you evaluate uh, the average level fighter's wrestling? Uh, some are going to be better than others, obviously, but generally across the board, yeah. how good is it? I mean, I think it's it's it's, it's real good. I think it's getting better. You know, I, I think it's a uh, an important aspect of the sport. You know, I think guys are, guys take it seriously and they get they get better at it. Even guys that aren't from a wrestling background, you know. How would you say? And I know you're 
I mean, you're about to make your pro debut, so this your answer here may change in a year or two or five. But in terms of the level of athlete in the heavyweight divisions in, in mixed martial arts, and they're all the same, obviously UFC is going to be the best, but from what you see from other athletes who are at the highest level, I, I should say, I guess, in, in, in the heavyweight division, uh, how would you rate their athleticism? I, w- I, would, I, I think that you've got to be pretty athletic in MMA, you know, and uh, I think that the guys that are successful, you can tell a good athlete, you know. W- relative to guys you faced in wrestling, how good are they? I mean, I think I think uh, you know, I think it's similar similar athleticism background. You know, I think if you're going to have success in a in a sport like wrestling or MMA, you got to have some athletic ability. Hmm. I think they have in MMA they have great athletic ability in wrestling too. So a lot of guys you actually faced in college have wound up coming over to MMA and doing pretty well. Cain Velasquez sort of chief among that. Did you have a moments where obviously you were interested in it? Obviously, guys were in your ear. But was there, was there ever a moment where you were saying to yourself, like, here's a guy who, granted, it's a different sport, but it's similar. Here's a guy who I beat uh, in college, uh, and he's just sort of kicking ass over here. I, I bet I can do that, too. Did, did that particular kind of thought ever cross your mind? I mean, not not necessarily like uh, that, but I saw, I mean, I see, like, a lot of guys that I went to school with and wrestled with having success, and I figured that... Uh, you know, it's, it's it's an interesting thing to get involved with, and and I think that, you know, as long as it's, you know, I'm I'm, I'm looking at these guys, they're doing well, and a lot a lot of them are, uh, you know, had they continued to wrestle, would have probably done real well too, but they they made the jump, so it seemed like a smoother transition looking at them. You know what I mean? Tell me why you picked ATT. You said it was a good fit, and one thing that ATT was known for this past year. Was they went to the NCAA Division One national tournament and were I don't know if recruiting is the word, but certainly scouting talent and to those who may have been interested, putting a word in their ear. Do you think ATT is a good fit because they're better than other teams at getting guys who are elite wrestlers and then turning them into elite fighters? Uh, I mean, for me personally, I thought it was a good fit because uh, they had like a lot of good training partners for me, and I really got along with the coaches. So, I mean, I, I think that they're making a, a, a tremendous effort to go after wrestlers. We've got a lot of good wrestlers uh, that are just starting out their careers, and, and I think they're going to continue to, to, to do that. But we've got a lot of guys that are from other backgrounds, too. So, I mean, but it, it, it did make it pretty smooth and easy to transition for me personally coming from a wrestling background. You have a background a bit in judo. Uh, you're famous in wrestling for your foot sweeps. To what extent have you kept those skills alive, or, or plan on um, do, do you plan on continuing to develop your judo now that it's arguably more applicable in mixed martial arts? Yeah, no, I, I, I like I like judo. Uh, I like cross training in judo. Um, I think I think it's a, it's a good it's a good it's a good grappling background. Uh, you know, I I, I, I want to continue to use it, and I want to, you know, work on uh, improving at it. Do you do you train in the gi still? Occasionally, yeah. Occasionally, I train in the gi. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of times to like get a good workout, and I'll, I'll just throw it on and, and and do some jiu-jitsu with it too. But most of the time, I train with, without it. Huh. And, uh... You know, a lot of the guys who transitioned from uh, wrestling to MMA told me that they obviously they'll use jiu-jitsu, they know jiu-jitsu, but the I, I, won't, I think laziness is a strong word, but like the more relaxed nature of jiu-jitsu relative to wrestling, they don't really like. What is your opinion about jiu-jitsu as you begin to train in it? Uh, I, I mean, I like it a lot. You know, a lot of it's really new, especially like stuff on your back and stuff that you would never really get to do in wrestling. But a lot of aspects are similar, like hip hip position and stuff like that. So I mean, it's it, it, it's fun learning it, and uh, you know I, I like grappling too. Uh, it's all it's all uh, pretty new to me, and and I'm trying to learn as much about it as I can. You know, hmm. uh, of all the skills you're trying to pick up, which have you acclimated uh, the most to, or the best to? Uh, you know, like pro- probably uh, the grappling. You know, I, I I I felt like it was most similar to what I had been doing. You know, is the striking as hard as you thought it would be? To, and I mean, and by that I mean to learn. 
Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely a, a skill, and, I, and that's probably one of the, one of the things I've been working on a lot. Is, and uh, pick, picking it up is uh, it takes a lot of work, and we work on it pretty much every day, you know. So you have this fight coming up. It's on Friday. It's going to be on Access TV. Um, obviously, you know, w- winning goes without saying. That's what you want to do. Is there a certain kind of way you want to win? And I know they're probably building off of your wrestling. But are there certain benchmarks that you're looking for, certain things you want to do this particular time out, um, sort of, I guess, to evaluate progress or uh, as a measure of testing how far you've come? Is any of that into play? You know, I, I just want to go out and compete. You know, if it's on the feet, I want to get the better of them on the feet. If it's on the ground, I want to get the better of them on the ground. You know, where, wherever we're going to find ourselves is what I want to, uh, you know, do better at. There, there have been elite wrestlers who've come over, and maybe not quite at your level, but certainly very, very good ones. And there's an argument that they were pushed way too fast. They were elite, um, and they got into fights with guys that were MMA veterans, and it didn't go their way. And, and some would argue, and it's not just for wrestling, but judo too, uh, that they got ruined along the way. Are you, uh, are you conscious uh, of... of there being a too much too soon. Uh, are you looking to have a really measured entrance into professional mixed martial arts in terms of the quality of opponent? Well, you know, like I'm, 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 I'm 30 years old. You know, uh, I wanna, I wanna challenge myself. You know, it's not like I'm 19 years old just getting my feet wet in the sport. You know, uh, but at the same time, you know, like I have a lot of faith in my coaches, and if they think I'm ready, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I know I'm ready. Do you have an idea about, and again, I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but in your mind, do you have a sense of, okay, in a year or two or three or whatever it is, I want to be fighting at the highest level in the UFC or, or, or Strike Force or whatever? Do you have an idea about a timeline? No. Right now, you know, I just want to get as good as I can get and learn as much as I can learn, you know. And, uh, you know, I think, I think of... Uh, as far as my game and all aspects of my game, improving it. That's kind of like my goal. And I got a lot of short term goals right now, but I'm, you know, I'm taking it day by day and, and uh, fight by fight. Are there any wrestlers who have crossed over whose career you find to be like that's a model you want to follow? Could be a Couture, could be a Cormier, could be, I don't know, Askren, or even somebody like Frank Yeager. Is there somebody who you feel like uh, they've gone from wrestler to fighter and you say, that's the guy that did it right? Yeah, you know, I, I see. Uh, I like I like uh, Johnny Hendricks's how he how he went about it. You know, he took his time and and uh, got involved and just got on a roll. You know, and, and uh, but all, all of them. I mean, I think any any one of those guys you mentioned, if your career goes like that, it's going to be good. You know. Hmm. So, um, you were something of a controversial figure in college wrestling, but basically for reasons that were specific to college wrestling. I don't think that'll carry over. But I was talking to Johnny Hendricks about it. It's funny you bring it up. And I was saying, he, same thing, he was a bit of a, you know, another controversial figure in college wrestling. And that was totally removed from him, his identity when he came to MMA. And, and he said he was really glad about that, that he didn't have to live that um, under those expectations anymore. Are you looking forward to sort of carving out a new athletic identity? Yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to that, and I'm looking, you know, I'm just looking forward to the whole, the whole deal, you know. Uh, is there anything you're particularly nervous about? Uh, no, no, not really. I mean, just you know, I'm taking it day by day, fight by fight, and uh, you know, try and enjoying it. Hmm. Uh, a couple more questions here, and we'll let you go. Uh, in terms of adapted wrestling to MMA, who, who, you know, somebody who, uh, for example, it's often believed that Chael Sonnen, he's not the best wrestler in MMA, but he might have the best adapted wrestling for MMA. In your mind, who has the best sort of MMA wrestling? Uh, you know, I, I think Chael Sonnen definitely, like you said, is, is real good at it. You know, I think Ben Aspen is really good at, you know, like control of fights with wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know, I think there's a... There's a there's a lot of really good wrestlers that use other aspects of MMA, but I definitely like when I think of wrestling, controlling the fight with wrestling. I would think like Ben Askren or Chael Sonnen or someone like that. You know. What about somebody who has no formal background in wrestling but has 
managed to use it well in MMA, like George St. Pierre. I know there's some controversy about how good he is. In your mind, how, how good is his his wrestling? I think it's real good. You know, I, I think he I, he doesn't have any background in wrestling. No, n- nothing except what he learned from training in MMA. From training in MMA, yeah. No, I think he's it's, uh, it's, he's you know when you're watching him fight, it, he was really good wrestling, great technique. You know, hmm. you know, it's pretty impressive. And, and can you talk about your health? I know wrestling is uh, it can be a grueling sport. There's a famous picture of you with a black eye. Um, how, how is your health at age 30? Uh, any anything that you carry over from wrestling that is something you have to watch out for? No, no, I'm pretty healthy. Uh, been lucky that way, and uh, you know, nothing, nothing too serious along the way has really held me back to bad. So I'm, I'm pretty good health. Hmm. All right, before we let you go, I know. Um, you got your fight. You're primarily focused on that. The day after is the 2012 NWCA Classic, All Star Classic here, and I live in DC. Uh, and uh, Kyle Dake and David Taylor are going to wrestle at 165. If I could, uh, could you give me a prediction for that match? I, I'm kind of I, I, like I want to go with Dake a little bit. You know, I, I've seen him wrestle freestyle, and he kind of like, you know, looked really, really good. I'm, I'm predicting Dake. And do you think? The match will be similar to the one they had at the Olympic trials, or because it's folk style, no, it, it'll, diff- it'll it, be different. It's going to be different, but I still think that uh, they could get it done. You know, he's a tough, tough scrapper. You know, not that not taking anything away from David Taylor, but I, I would go with Dave on that. All right, uh, Steve Mako, best of luck to you on Friday on Access TV, and thank you very much. Thanks.